हेलो एवरन हम आई सेल सचिन राठौर वर्किंग एज असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन मेकैनिकल इंजीनियर डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉम वॉल्स इंस्ट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर टुडे वी आर डीलिंग विथ द रोलिंग कॉन्टैक्ट बेरिंग पार्ट फाइव सो प्रीवियस टू दैट वी आर सीन द रोलिंग कॉन्टैक्ट बेरिंग पार्ट वन टू थ्री फोर सो इन दैट वी आर सीन वॉट इज इन बाय स्टैटिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ द बेरिंग हाउ द बेरिंग आर क्लासिफाइड अकॉर्डिंग टू द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ द लोड एंड वी आर सीन वॉट इज इन बाय डायनामिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ द बेरिंग सो बेस्ड ऑन दैट फॉर टूडे सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू सी द न्यूमरिकल बेस्ड ऑन द डायनामिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ द बेरिंग सो द लर्नर विल एबल टू डिजाइन द डीप ग्रुप बॉल बेरिंग दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट जस्ट आई विल रीड द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट और ट्रांसमिशन शाफ्ट रोटेटिंग एट सेवन ट्वेंटी आर पी एम एंड ट्रांसमिटिंग पावर फ्रॉम पुली पी टू द स्पर गियर जी एच ओन इन द फिगर सो दिस फिगर दे आर गिवन अस द बेल्ट टेंशन एंड द गियर टू फोर्सेस आर एज फॉलोज सो दे आर गिवन अस द फोर्सेस एक्टिंग ऑन द गियर्स एज वेल एज ऑन द पुली इट इज इंडिकेटिंग बाय द नेम पी वन पी टू पी टी एंड पी आर वेयर द पी टी एंड पी आर आर द रेडियल एंड द टेंजेंशियल फोर्सेज एक्टिंग ऑन द गियर एंड पी वन पी टू आर द टेंसाइल फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन द बेल्ट दैट इज द बेल्ट टेंशन द वेट ऑफ द पुली इज हंड्रेड न्यूटन विच इज एक्टिंग वर्टिकली डाउनवर्ड द डायमीटर ऑफ द शाफ्ट एट द बेरिंग बी वन एंड बी टू इज टेन एम एम एंड द ट्वेंटी एम एम रिस्पेक्टिवली सो दे हैड यूज द स्टेप द बार एट द बेरिंग नंबर वन दैट इज अ बी वन here is the b1 here uh, the diameter of the shaft is 10 mm and here the diameter of the shaft is 20 mm the load factor is 2.5 and the expected life for 90% of the bearing is 8000 hours select the single row deep groove ball bearing at b1 and b2 so we have to provide the specification of the bearing means we have to give the designation of the bearing at the end of this numerical so we will see how to design the bearing so or how to find out the designation of the bearing so uh, the given data they had given a speed of the shaft d1 d2 that is the diameter at which the bearing is mounted life of the bearing is 8000 hours and the load factor is 2.5 these are the given data now in the step number 1 we have to find out the reaction at the bearing as the load is acting on the gear as well as on the pulley we have to find out the reactive forces at the pulley so you can think about this why it is necessary to find out the reactions of the bearing so you can pause the video and you can think about this so for finding the reaction at the bearing we have to draw the free body diagram and the force resolutions which is acting on the bearing as well as on the gear so this is a bearing number b1 here is a gear g is mounted bearing number b2 and here is a pulley is mounted so they had given us the forces acting on the gear as well as the pulley and also they had given us a distance in between bearing and the gear as well as in between the pulley and the gear so these are the distance these are the forces which is acting on the gear so here on the gear the radial forces as well as the tangential forces is going to act so here i have located the radial as well as the tangential forces on the gear g similarly uh, these are the value they had given us in the problem statement that is a pr is equal to 181 and pt is equal to 497 newton similarly they had given us the value of the tangential force uh, or the tensile force which is acting on the belt so p1 plus p2 is nothing but the total tensile force which is acting on the belt over the pulley as well as the load of the or the weight of the pulley they had given us which is acting vertically downward so this is a weight of the pulley is acting vertically downward and this is a tensile force or the tension in the belt so they had given us value p1 p2 so we have to make the summation of this p1 plus p2 and this is a load of the pulley which is acting vertically downward so these are the reactive forces we have to consider these are the forces which is acting on the bearing number 2 that is a rh2 and rv1 in the vertical plane rv2 and in the horizontal plane rh2 similarly on the bearing number 1 that these four value we have to find out means we are getting we have to calculate the reactive forces acting on the bearing number b1 and b2 so for finding the reactive forces at bearing number 1 and 2 we have to consider the equilibrium conditions of the system 
so in which we have to consider the vertical plane and the take the moment about the bearing number 1 now we have to take the moment about the 1 so you will get the value of rs2 and rv1 if you consider the vertical plane you will get the value of rv2 so while taking the moment about the b1 you will get that the pr into this perpendicular distance 100 minus rv2 into perpendicular distance this is a 250 total perpendicular minus plus w which is acting vertically downward w into this total distance 400 so just put the value of the pr w you will get the value of rv2 so this i have put the value of the pr and the w you will get the value of the rv2 is equal to 232.4 newton now consider all the vertical forces is equal to 0 and calculate the value of rv1 so we are getting the equation rv1 minus pr plus rv2 minus w is equal to 0 so you can calculate the value of rv1 now we are getting the value of the rv1 is 48.6 newton similarly consider the horizontal plane take the moment about the b1 you will get the value of rh2 and summation h is equal to 0 if you consider that you will get the value of rh1 so in the next slides you will get that value of the rh1 and rh2 so here i am getting the value of rh2 by taking the moment about the b1 in the by considering the horizontal plane then summation h is equal to 0 you will get the value of the rh1 the reactive forces at the two bearings are given as so i have to find out the resultant forces at the bearing number 1 and 2 at the bearing number 1 we are getting the resultant force is equal to square root of rv1 square plus rh1 square so if you put the value respectively we are getting the value of the total re uh, resultant force acting at the bearing number 1 similarly calculate the resultant force at the bearing number 2 the bearing reactions are in the radial direction therefore we are getting fr1 is equal to r1 is equal to this value and fr2 is equal to r2 is equal to this value okay. now as there is no axial thrust on the bearing hence we are getting f a1 is equal fa1 is equal to fa2 is equal to 0 therefore we can easily calculate the value of the dynamic load as c is nothing but the dynamic load p is nothing but the equivalent load and l10 is a rated life of the bearing into the load factor so here we are knowing that p is nothing but the equivalent load we are getting the equivalent load is equal to x fr plus y fa but here fa is equal to 0 therefore we are getting directly the equivalent load is equal to fr1 as x is equal to 1 when there is a axial force is 0 therefore we are getting p p1 is equal to fr1 similarly p2 is equal to fr2 now we have to calculate the dynamic load at bearing number 1 and 2 so we can give the designation as a c1 and c2 therefore c1 is equal to p1 into l10 raised to 1 by 3 into the load factor so they had given us the value of the life of the bearing in the hours so we have to convert the life of the bearing in the hours to the million revolution because we have to put here the value of the life rated life of the bearing in the million revolution so this is a correlation in between your the rated life of the bearing in million revolution and the life of the bearing in the hours so they had given us the in the hours just put this value that is 8000 hours you will get the value of the l10 rated life of the bearing in the million revolution so considering the load factor as they had given us the load factor is 1.5 put this value of the load factor here and the life of the bearing in million revolution already we had calculated and the equivalent load at the bearing number 1 just put this value you will get the value of the c1 similarly find out the value of the c2 so you have to refer this table and calculate or give the designation of the bearing so if you refer this table they had given us at the step number 1 or the at the bearing number 1 the diameter of the shaft is 10 mm so this is a 10 mm and here we have calculated the value of c1 is 1953.71 so just check out for the diameter 10 the value of the dynamic load dynamic load is given by the letter c so check out the value of the c is 1953.71 so here are the values that is the 
but our the value is 1953 go to the next value that is a 4620 so which is greater than that of the your the actual dynamic load so you can consider this maximum load so you can provide the designation as a 600 so this is a designation this is a bearing we are using at the bearing number 1 similarly for the bearing number 2 the diameter of the shaft is 20 mm that is a 20 mm diameter of the shaft and the dynamic load is 22499.90 so you can refer the value of the dynamic load c that is 3070 because if you see the previous value that is 15900 which is less than your the actual load so i can consider the next value that is a 30700 so for this i have to use the bearing number 6404 so bearing number 600 and 6404 are the suitable at bearing number 1 and 2 so these bearing i have to use for the bearing number 1 and the bearing number 2 so which will satisfy the conditions of the forces means that the bearing will not get fail when i am going to use this specification of the bearing i have taken this references Thank you.